Welcome to Ground Control. In this tutorial we're going to be converting a 20 amp opto ESC into an ESC with a switching voltage regulator. I have the opto ESC, I have a switching voltage regulator which will supply 5 volts, 3 amps of power, a piece of clear heat shrink that I'm going to use to tie these two together, a piece of heat shrink to replace the heat shrink I removed from the 20 amp opto ESC so I could get to the solder pads and since I'm going to be using the output of this uh, switching voltage regulator to power my receiver my servos and my micro FPV system on my plane my park jet I'm going to be clipping off the output and you can tell the voltage flow by the arrow on the label this is your input this is your output so I also have three um, servo connector pins here and a servo connector shroud so you're going to need a a crimper you're going to need a set of scissors or something to cut your wire you are going to need some type of blade like an exacto knife or a utility knife something to remove about three millimeters of the insulation from the uh, from the output connector that we're going to be removing and we're going to be removing this end too we're going to be removing the input and we're going to be soldering onto the pads that we exposed on our opto ESC so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip off my wire and I don't need a really long pair of leads to hook up to my receiver my receiver is going to be setting on the other side of the fuselage from the speed controller and I like to save as much weight as I possibly can now I'm going to remove about three millimeters of insulation from each one of these wires and this wire is pretty thick for a um, for a servo connector to go inside that shroud so there might be some cases where on the output you may need to completely remove the wires from the switching voltage regulator and use a smaller gauge wire I think that this will work but there might be cases where you might have to do that okay don't forget to twist your wire up so that your your wires will slip into the uh, servo pin without fraying it without bending any of the wires back Okay, so I'm going to take my crimper and insert my pin into the first die. And I have another tutorial on this crimper. If you guys have never used a crimper before, and I will provide a link to that tutorial. The main thing is making sure that you get your insulation to the end of that first tab let's see what we have that looks pretty good and then I'm going to finish it off with the second die I hope this is I hope this is in camera view and I apologize if some of it is out of focus because I do not have an autofocus camera but I'll keep it in focus as good as I can second pin Okay, I think that's got that. Finish it off on the second die. Okay. Now we just need to slide these into our shroud and hopefully we can get them in there. Locked in. That one's locked in. And, oh, you know what? I just made a mistake because the the hot wire is going to go in the center all right so we got our hot wire in now we're going to take our ground wire see if we can get that in okay so now I have my connector attached to the the uh, switching voltage regulator and I've got my shroud attached and that's ready to connect to my receiver 
supply power to it. The advantage of doing this is if you're using it for an airplane or even if you're, you know, if you're using it for a quadcopter, um, if you're not going to be using a power distribution board that has a built-in voltage regulator or if you want to use a power distribution board and, and use a switching voltage regulator instead of a linear voltage regulator, they're much more efficient, they use less of your battery power, and they produce less heat. So for my park jets, this enables me to be able to use multi-rotor opto ESCs, add a switching voltage regulator to it to power my receiver, my servos, and my um, <coughs> excuse me, micro FPV system. It allows me to use a much more efficient um, voltage regulator since this is a switching voltage regulator. Normally you won't find an, a speed controller that's rated for less than 40 amps that will come with a actual switching voltage regulator. Almost all of the, all of the um, speed controllers that I have looked at thus far that are below 40 amps come with a linear voltage regulator. So this enables me to have a much more compact 20 amp speed controller and, and use a switching voltage regulator to supply power. The only disadvantage to doing this that I could see, because this is going to end up being much more compact, it should weigh less than a typical airplane 20 amp ESC that has a built in linear voltage regulator. So this is going to produce less heat, but the, the only disadvantage to doing this is that you're going to need an additional port on your receiver. You're going, to, you're going to use one port for your throttle from your speed controller, but since that's not supplying power with an Opto ESC, you're going to need an additional port on your receiver to plug your voltage regulator in to supply power. And that's the only disadvantage to doing this that I, that I could possibly see. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to clip our wires. This is our input for our voltage regulator from our speed controller. We're going to tap into the uh, uh, the battery wires that supply power to the speed controller. And we want these to be fairly short because what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder those leads onto that and then I'm going to bend this underneath. And when I bend it underneath, I'm going to have this little heat sink part of it facing outward so that it can dissipate any heat that builds up during flight. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these off. All right, and you know, and you can always save your leads too. I will use these. I will use these JST leads for uh, for something else, for a battery or something else. So, don't throw those away. I'll go ahead and remove another three millimeters of insulation from the leads. Okay, so now I have my leads exposed. So the next step that we're going to need to perform is we're going to have to move over to the solder station, tin up these wires, and then solder those onto the pads on the speed controller. Okay, so my soldering iron is nice and hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tin up this wire a little bit. Both of these wires. Okay, I think that's got that. And I've got a little bit of painter's tape down here to hold down my speed controller while I'm soldering these wires to it. So first I'm going to solder in the hot wire. And now I'm going to solder in the ground. Well, that's certainly not the prettiest solder job. But I think that's going to work. Yeah. I think it's good and solid. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to get my lead out of the way here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some heat shrink to cover up these solder pads that I have in this Opto ESC. 
and we'll go ahead and shrink those down put some heat to the heat shrink to protect those solder pads I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here okay and I can still see the label so let's go ahead and put some heat to that now we're going to bend that over. We're going to take our clear piece of heat shrink to hold these two together so that there's no stress on the wires. And I'm using clear because uh, so it does not obscure the label on either the speed controller or the switching voltage regulator okay so there we go now I'm gonna apply just a little bit of heat just to, just to snug it up okay all right, so now we have a switching voltage regulator added to our Opto ESC. It's fairly compact. And what I want to do next, just to give you an idea of how compact and lightweight these can be, and what I will also do is I'll, I will probably trim down the, the servo lead from the speed controller as well and make it just as lightweight and compact as I can. Like I said, this is going to be sitting on one side of my fuselage and then my receiver is going to be sitting on the other. So these are going to, these are going to plug right in, no problem. So let's go ahead and pull out a digital scale and I want to show you the weight of this 20 amp speed controller. Get that camera out this 20 amp speed controller that we've just converted over with a switching voltage regulator and I want you to see how much this weighs compared to these other airplane speed controllers that I have. Now this one has a much shorter power lead on it for the battery than the other ones do so we probably let's say let's just say we add another uh, two grams to that Okay, so that would be 13.34 grams You know in order to get it to where it had a power lead as long as these do Okay, so this is a 20 amp opto ESC, which is now has been converted. It's no longer an opto ESC It has a switching voltage regulator All of them have XT30 connectors on them this one if we add two grams for the additional length of the of the battery leads on the other on the other speed controllers we would come up with 13.33 grams okay now this one is hobby wing skywalker 20 amp speed controller this is rated for a two to three cell this opto esc that we just converted is is rated for a two to four cell and this speed this um, switching voltage regulator is going to supply five volts at three amps the linear voltage regulator on this one is going to supply 5 volts but only 2 amps so we got an amp less power and let me make sure I've got all the wires up this is 20.96 grams for this 20 amp speed controller which only has a linear voltage regulator and I have this one here it's a it's a favorite it's a sky one 20 amp two to three cell lipo and it has a five volt back that supplies two amps of power so this one also provides one amp less power than the one that we just converted we'll put that on the scale 
and that one weighs 21.2 so we've ended up ended up saving how much was this one again 20.97 right 20.97 almost 21 grams and uh, the one that we converted if I can get all the wires up there 11.35 we'll say 13.35 we've saved what eight grams near almost almost eight grams seven and a half we'll say seven and a half grams we've saved seven and a half grams of weight by converting this opto esc and we have one amp more power plus we have a switching voltage regulator so yeah i think that the benefits um of doing this outweigh um the need to have an additional port on your receiver you know yeah, I think there's a huge benefit to doing this. So now, as part of the uh, second half of the review for this switching voltage regulators, we will be putting this speed controller and switching voltage regulator into one of the park jets, and we're going to field test it. So watch for that video. So I hope this was informative. I hope this shows that you can use more than just airplane uh, speed controllers in your airplane whatever type of airplane you have you're not going to be limited to just using airplane speed controllers that are big and heavy and bulky like that one and and have to use a linear voltage regulator if you're if you're using a speed controller that's under 40 amps okay so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial now you can go out and modify your own opto escs and add a switching voltage regulator to it uh, please give a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe don't forget to check out our Patreon site. We have a lot of free content there as well. And I will see you in the air.